This is FTP Sports. This is Gunslingers. Yeah, this is Canner's hair. And actually, we have another Canner's hair. This is Lee Cannerville. Special, yeah. special tonight. Um, just first and foremost, want everyone please to smash the likes and uh, subscribes. Oh, wait a second. We, we have our, our resident here, Nigerian Englishman. Welcome, sir. How you doing? <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That's how I felt when I heard the news that no more Super League. Blessed. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> How are we doing, guys? How are we doing? Sorry we're for the name. We're all good, man. Love, love, blessed. We're, we're, we're all blessed. Do you know what I mean? So, obviously, good. just introducing Lee. Lee, this is the Nigerian Englishman. Listen, How are you, mate? Are you all right? Good, mate. Good, good, good. I should say Bawani as I'm calling from Lagos. Bawani. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, 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 this, this is international for real. That's mad. Yeah. Yeah, so look, you know. The theme of today pretty much is 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 it's all about Lee, really. Mm. Arsenal, the, the things what you what you did back then, um, what you're doing now. Um, and and essentially we just want to kind of get a gist of you know, I, I guess the, the inner workings of what happened or what what goes on inside a football club, a big football club like Arsenal, how Wenger, you know, produced to you know his teams. What it was it was like to kind of you know train with those kind of players and everything you know uh, there were special players and you a know a couple of players that I got some specific questions about yeah you know, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> and, and 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 really and truly just you know your journey really um, and and that is right now you know where I want to start really is your early years um, you know how how you got into football. Where you started off, you know, go, go, take it way back, take it back, yeah, take it right back. Way back. I'm just looking at that picture, you can see the kits are changed, innit? They were baggy kits back in the day, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, none of that fitted stuff that we've yeah, got now, right? XL, everyone got an XL, um, <laughs> but no, from obviously from being young, um, started playing typically like probably everyone else at six, five, six, you know, just messing about. I had an older brother. That was two years above, so I was always trying to get involved with with him and um, trying to play involved with his mates and that. Um, and my first team was a team called Larkspur Rovers. Oh, uh, West yeah, London. Lark West London. Yeah, is my first team under sevens. Um, and I think I was there a couple of years, and then we end I ended up going to a team called Parkfield. Um, Parkfield, oh, hey, definitely yeah. remember them. So good team, yeah. Good, they, were rivals, but they were my rivals back in my were they, yeah. They were kind of like Harrow Way, weren't they? That's right. yeah, 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 yeah. So we traveled a little bit out, like, but um, I don't even really remember why I, I went there. I can't, I can't really remember, but went to Parkfield, and then from there, I got um, spotted just prob as you do probably in a game by a Watford Scout, yeah. Um, and started going there on a Monday evening, just training. Um, it's different to now because academies now, obviously, once you join at under nines, you're yeah. that's you. you. You can't play for anyone else. Whereas back, right. you know, back. Oh, then, really? Yeah. If they want to, if a professional club want to sign you now from under nines, that's you can't. That's it. That's your team. So you leave your grassroots team. Um, obviously, back in my day, you you just trained with the academy and then you played the odd game in a school holiday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you stayed with your team, which I kind of agree with still now. You know, I think it's important for kids to still play with their mates and that. But, um, but yeah, ended up going to Watford. Um, from that Parkfield team, we, it was actually um, a team got formed called Western Rangers. It was just a team that got made up. My brother was playing for the older team. And we just literally, when I look back now, I think what they did, I thought, that's a liberty. They just took all the best players. Do like. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you, at the time you just do it, don't you? Like, thinking, wow, just get, really who's playing there? there? Is it? Oh, I'm there. Yeah, everyone just coming there. So we had, yeah, our man. team was frightening. We had, a, I think, a lot of them. I think from that, we had a couple that ended up going to play for like Watford and um, oh. myself, obviously, going to Arsenal. But I think we was under 11s um, or under 11s or under 12s. So, we used to just destroy everyone in that team. Um, 
And then from there, um, I don't even know if you know this, Trevor, how young I was when I think back now, but uh, um, playing for like my district and my county, got into those teams. And then I got trials for a, a place called Lillyshaw. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which, was a, which was a national school. Do, do you know what? Do you know what, Lee? Sorry, sorry, cutting there. I mean, I remember Rav, we kind of like because you moved out because oh, I'm from London, and then you moved from West London to Hertfordshire. Yeah, yeah. And, every, and I didn't really kind of have that much contact with you because obviously the early years we had a lot of contacts and stuff. And then the first time I kind of like um, I, I saw you on TV. It was some, some Sky program called the World of right. FB. World of FB, that's right, yeah. And you was on that. And I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck is yeah, it's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember, didn't even tell him about it, no? Oh, yeah, I didn't even tell him about it. And then the next, next thing I, um, I, I hear um, my dad saying, oh, we got tickets to Wembley to watch you play against Spain. I'm like, what yeah. the hell? What? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah. oh, no way. I was like, that's nuts. Yeah. It was it was a mad journey, and again, at the time, you just roll with it, and it you just that, that yeah. was it. I was playing for my county, Hertfordshire. We yeah. didn't have the best team. We used to, you know, we used to get beat heavily by Inner London and all that. Oh, Inner um, London always had good. Always team. strong, yeah, always always strong. So, um, but I ended up getting invited to these trials. So I think they picked the two or three best out of each county and put them forward to these trials for Lillyshaw for the national school. I didn't even know what it was. I just was going to some trials at the time. <laughs> And then I went to the southeast one, um, and then got through that. And it's like, oh, okay, like because yeah. at that time it's a bit different to now. You was only in your local little bubble. It weren't, yeah, it weren't like you was now. Academies are playing everywhere, and they're playing everyone all over the country. Mm -hmm. Where I just knew I was good in my little school. Yeah, and that was yeah. it. Yeah, you know, and that was, yeah, right. I, didn't know, I didn't know how good anyone else was, but I just knew I was good <laughs> in my school. Um, yeah. So I went to these trials, got through. Then I started finding out what this thing was for. Like it was to leave home, like to go into the national school for two wow. years. Um, and then I, I was adamant I wouldn't go. But I remember my dad just saying, "Well, just see how far you get. Right? Just see how far you get with it." So I got to like the first national trial. I think that was like the last sixty. Then got through that, and then it was down to the last thirty-two. And that's then you stayed up there for like three days because you started doing your medicals and all. They were going to pick sixteen wow. from that group. Okay. Um, look around the place. Um, then I started thinking, oh, oh, this is serious, you know, and um, we got shown around the place by, um, in, in Lillyshaw, obviously, you're there for two years, so the year above us, they were in their first year at the time, yeah. um, and it was like Michael Owen, Wes Brown. Oh, um, yeah? John, yeah, big Michael Ball that played for Everton, John yeah, Hull, yeah. Wow. Um, this so is definitely. fast, Michael Owen. Then, yeah, Michael the fast Owen. one, <laughs> he was, and he was the man. And he the was still the fast. England were on the telly for under 15s, and he just broke all the records mm. and things like that. So, um, so we got shown round, and I remember even up to the day, I was still saying I wasn't going to go until yeah. the letter came. Um, and again, it was my dad that said, "Like an opportunity is too good to yeah. say no yeah. to." Because I was a, I, I like my I like my home life. Sure. I was happy at home. I'd be like, son, you better pack your bag. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we are yeah, making no. it. Yeah, my mum like my mum got the letter and was half happy and half not happy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, went to the national school where you left at like year ten. So year ten and year eleven, you left home. You went and stayed. Yeah, you stayed up there. You went to a normal school. Um, you know, all the boys lived together. So you had 16 lads from the year above that are in their in their second year, the likes of Owen and all that. And then the, our, our group came in as as the new group of 16. Yep. So in my group, there was just to name drop a little bit more. There was um, Scott Park is probably the biggest one out of that um, okay. that's made it. Um, and then who else was in my Franny Jeffers? Uh, oh Francis yeah, Jeffers, yeah. Um, and it was just, it was probably the best. When I look back now, it's probably the best two years of my life. That's crazy, isn't it? Because yeah, it was good. You didn't want to go. You, yeah. you didn't want to go. Um, so, Lee, um, Gunner King is just. Uh, Lee, <laughs> how are you, mate? How's right? it going? You all right? So, yeah, so, so sorry I'm late, man. I, I thought that today's show was at eight today for some reason. I'm, I'm really hey. sorry. 
Hey, 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 hey. Cool for me. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, so just to recap, you know, leave, leave just to highlight know. before we continue, I wasn't the late one today. Let's <laughs> 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 just say, let's throw it in. No, no, yeah, we, continue, continue. no we got that. Uh, yeah. But you, you know what? I'm lately, I mean, the early years and everything was so similar to many, you know, young kids and everything, and you know how they go. I mean, I, I guess speaking for myself, you know, playing from your school, playing for your borough, then going to play for your county, and then um, hey, there's one thing actually, I didn't have to go for a southeast counties trial. I went straight to Liverpool, but only for two days. Yeah, I played against Chelsea, and. Um, had a good game and, and someone just said, yeah, just take him up. Just And I got a, a letter in the post and it was tickets to Liddishaw. I was like, train tickets to Liddishaw. Yeah. Wow, okay. But it's last 60, but that's that, that's where I got that to. That was 61, yeah, last 60 you go to first, didn't it? Yeah. But but yeah. No, but that that is so so similar to, to um um how, you know, I guess guys our age and everything, <laughs> but everything's you know, changed a lot now. Yeah, um, so much money involved. Um, is, is only probably about a year ago I was speaking to Reese James, and he was telling me about his, um, and, and he's obviously what, in his early 20s, and his kind of um meteoric rise, you know, through the ranks through Chelsea and stuff. And uh, it's, it's so different, and it is, as you say, you're, you're pretty much um ring fenced by that club. Yeah, uh, and and that's it. You, they, they have control over you. In, in terms yeah. Of, you know, what it's, you, you, yeah, it's, so, it's it's the difference. Obviously, now you think at 15, 14 to sixteen, we was at Lil, I was at Lillyshaw. There yeah, was like the lads from all different Man United players, Liverpool players. You know, I was at the time I was at Millwall, so I wasn't yeah. at Arsenal then. I was I was a, I never really I never played for Millwall, but I was I was associated with them. Because yeah. um, I'd signed the schoolboy forms there, so um, I, I think two years after my year, it was the likes of Defoe. Uh, he was the uh, Liam Knight. They were the last year, <laughs> and then Knight, the academies right. come in, and it was bang Chelsea. No one's touching our youth players, you know, and oh. and that's and that's how it was. And um, but the last kind of six years of the Lily, Lily Shaw groups, it produced, you know, some of the best players. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe, Joe Cole, Defoe, Owen, Wes Brown, um, you know, produced. They was in the last four years there, so it was it was doing something right. But yeah. I think yeah. you can see now with the crop of players that are coming in, you're like, wow. Yeah, they're on a different level now. These young lads, for sure, for sure. Yeah, on a different the, the level. facilities now as well makes such a huge um, difference as well. You know, cause I remember playing on pitches which. You know, which is mud, mud parks basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, they've got everything. You know, they've got everything. Yeah, they've everything. got everything. They've got everything for them. Um, but to be fair, we got looked after. Obviously, that level oh. I was at, we was I was playing for England under 15s. You know, we were sponsored by Umbro. You just wow. used to go down to the to the um, the place down at the bottom of Lillyshaw and you just go and get your boots and try. Like, they, they get you. Oh, yeah, I was struggling to buy, pay for boots. <laughs> yeah. My man just went in like, yeah, I have those ones, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Man, you know, and I think now, I just again, you just say it's just it, just you just that was it. That yeah. was it. I need, I need some new Umbro trainers. I'll oh, just pop down there and get some. Wow, like, is that literally what it was yeah. like? Wow. Yeah. Mate, I'd always need new trainers. Oh, no. <laughs> just I'll be, I'll buy one, sell one. Buy one, sell one. Mate. You know, you get for me for Christmas, isn't it? A pair of oh, no. trainers or whatever, boy. Yeah. Be... And the stock room was mad. You can imagine Christmas and birthday. Oh, yeah. The stock yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh my gosh. So, so, so that's so, that's so now we're up with you at Millwall. And um, you say you, you don't play. So, how, how did the move then to Arsenal come about? I mean, so, so at Lillyshaw, obviously, um, you play you play different clubs every week. So we was at that time apparently the best sixteen in the country, and right. was together. So we trained every day. We went to a normal school, but after school we trained, and then on a Sunday we'd play a game, and we'd play Man United, we'd play Arsenal, we'd play Tottenham, we'd play, and they would come to us. And the odd time we would go down there, but they would travel up to us and we'd play the games. Um, so you can imagine the teams are watching us a lot. They're yeah. watching, you know, um, yeah. 
their decision, <coughs> especially the bigger teams. At the time, I'm at, I'm at Millwall, so um, the big teams were watching if they thought I was good enough, obviously. So we had some a couple of lads at Man U. And at Arsenal at this time, this is in 95, 96. Arsenal ain't the team they were in 96. Yeah, that's British, 96, that's you know, British yeah. real time then, yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit before that. So you imagine at that time, it's Man U and it's, they're the boys, they're the Nantar and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so when, um, when I came towards the end, I knew I was going to leave Millwall and I think Millwall knew. So all they were trying to do was to get the best contract deal they could get. Okay. So, when it came to it, there was two clubs. It was Arsenal or it was Leeds. Leeds were up and coming at that time with Woodgate yes. and Alan, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. McPhail and Kuehl and all that. So they were, and um, just bought Rio Ferdinand. So they were the up and coming team mm-hmm. as well. Um, and I knew I was going to go to Arsenal, but Leeds were offering money, like money. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Lee, are you an Arsenal fan? Yeah. You were before, yeah. Okay. So yeah. it was no brainer. And really. Arsenal, London Colney was up the road from my home, so I could. I lived away for two years, so all I could think is, I'm going home. Yeah, yeah I'm going, and I'm yeah. and I'm and yeah, that, that the probably waiting on the road. Road. Yeah, where mm-hmm. Leeds, it would have been back into moving to Leeds and staying in digs and staying with a family, and yeah. So it was a no brainer. So it weren't mm-hmm. even at that time as well. I was sixteen, and I think at that time it weren't even thinking about any money because you just thought at that time I'm just thinking I'm going to make it anyway so it don't matter yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. My, yeah. that's your mentality yeah. so I don't mm. care what they're offering me yet because I'll make it at Arsenal instead and get more money there so that was my mentality so um, at 16 yeah I signed a one year YTS so everyone had to do a year no matter what you didn't care how good you were because on your 17th birthday you could sign as a pro mm. so I was 17 till March anyway. So from that summer all the way to March, I was going to be a YTS anyway. Okay. But some lads, if their birthdays were September, they could have signed near enough straight away. Okay. And, right. And so Arsenal made sure everyone did at least one year, pro, one year YTS, no matter how good you are. Um, okay. And then after that one year, I signed a three year professional. So wow. I already knew going into Arsenal at 16 that I was signing a four year deal. So my my time then was to then get into the first team. That was that was obviously the aim. The target, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was the aim, yeah. And um, yes, and then obviously going to Arsenal was it was mad because <clears throat> when I signed, obviously, and they're competing with Leeds as well. You know what? Obviously, my dad Trev, he's he's negotiates, isn't he? He wants to negotiate everything. So, <laughs> they want to negotiate everything, like, no matter what it is, petrol money, everything. <laughs> <laughs> My type of guy. Like, extra, um, home, extra tickets for home um, games. Yeah. You know, everything. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he was, uh, he was, so with, with um, Arsenal, they were, they looked after my mum and dad well as well yeah. while yeah. I was living at home. Yeah. Um, but it was, what, one thing they asked me, he said, again, when you're a YTS, you have to clean boots. Okay. So, you know, this was back in the day when YTS mm, did something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now they yeah, don't do yeah, no yeah. jobs. Nothing, nothing man. They oh. don't do nothing. Um, so they asked me who I wanted, whose boots do you want to clean? You can yeah. pick two players. So, obviously, I was a defender, so I picked Adams and Bolts. Wow. <laughs> Bolts, yeah. Mad. They were the two centre-backs, yeah. Oh, Nice. Yeah. Big shoes, man. Big shoes. Yeah. Big cool, cool, yeah. Yeah. Adams at the That's time, clean, I yeah. didn't know. Adams was wearing red Asics. I don't know if you remember. He's wearing red Yeah, Asics. I do remember oh them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. I do remember them. So I had Mate, to, you got to have to get them spotless. A little, <laughs> a little special polish like that I had to do. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> So, wow. um, that's nah. yeah, nah, but that education goes as part of football, man. I think yeah. that they're taking that stuff away from it, yeah. That's why, because, a... you know, my first day then at Arsenal, obviously, yeah. you go and you go and meet that was going to be my next question, yeah. You... Okay. So, that was my first day. So, Adams, he's the he's the he's running, he runs Arsenal anyway, so he's the man, isn't he? So, mm-hmm. my first day, I go and meet my, my players, and yeah. that was perfect for me because that Adams, then from that day, he watched out for me and and all oh, that so, wow. yeah. yeah yeah so the first day i went in he knew my name and i don't know whether he res- he must have researched it it weren't like i'm this player like so mm-hmm. they're just those little things so when yeah. i come in he was like lee cannibal how are you 
I was like, oh, all right. You must have <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, that was a touch. Like, you, know, you know what? Like, he knows like, my name. You know is there name. another Lee about? What's going on? <laughs> like, yeah. I would have been late. Gas. Yeah. Well, gas. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how, so, you know, with you training and everything, um, was it those two who pretty much kind of took you under their wing and looked out for you, who kind of um, helped you settle in? Or was yeah. there kind of someone else who kind of... Uh, I don't know. Who used more kind of like I don't know, budget up with you know to kind of settle yourself down there. And um, stuff. It was it was different at the time again because Arsenal's training ground. We trained at it. It's not the training ground. It was we ended up moving to the new the one they're in now. But we trained at London Colney where Watford are training now. Right. Um, <coughs> first team. I don't know. This was obviously gone. They're going back to nineteen ninety seven now. But there was a fire at London Colney, so the first team never trained there. So they. They used to get a bus. They used to go and meet at Sopwell House, it was called. Um, uh, and they would get changed there and then get the coach down to the training ground. But we would change. We had porter cabins at London Colney. So the youth team and reserves <laughs> yeah. would change there. Um, so you never really, so they, we'd all eat together, but you didn't really, into, you didn't get to see them as much as what I did when, rolling on a couple of years yeah. when we all went yeah. into the new training ground you obviously you're all there then um mm -hmm. so that first year my yts year i didn't get to see a lot of the first team just when they really come and collect, pick their boots up and that and uh, had a quick chat um and that was it so uh it was it was for me i'm just starstruck you yeah. know what i mean like ian Wright, Imagine. ian Wright come Mate. in and he's, you know, I mean, he's come in like and I'm just like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Because what you see see on TV, right? And it's now you're lively. Like, yeah, now you're lively. Yeah. yeah. So, so wait a minute. So was so Wenger was the manager when you signed YTS? So yeah. So Wenger had came in the '96 halfway through the season, hadn't he? Um, right. So great. and I I signed in the '97. Yeah. Um, so he came halfway through the '96 '97 season. Right, um, right, and in the 97-98 season is the year I joined when they did the double. Wow. So that was really? that was the first yeah. year. So my YTS year was the year they did the double. That's nuts. Yeah, that is nuts. You must yeah. have thought, listen, man, this, this is, is it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, with the league champions buzzing. Yeah. I mean, also, well, you got, you know, you, you got that kind of that that carrot, that proverbial carrot being dangled because you had a seventeen-year-old Elka. Getting yeah, coming that season, yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> did he ever train with you guys first yeah, off? Yeah, yeah, he came in with us first. What, what was he? he was, was he above everyone else? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can <laughs> tell from there, yeah. He was a joke, yeah. He was just, just lightning, yeah. lightning. Couldn't get near him, you know. So like, and then you're thinking because he was 17, so he was two years older than me, and right? Then, I think he was coming up to 18, so he was two years older than me. And I'm I'm looking at him thinking, wow, that's the yeah. level. Yeah, mm. that's the level you need to be. Because obviously he's trying to get into Ian Wright's position. And everyone just mm. starts saying, like, he's not no way, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't take out Wrighty. Eh? And then obviously halfway through that season, he's coming right. in. And yeah. like, oh, wow. Smashed it. Smashed yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, he was special. You could see it. You could see it yeah. straight away. He was yeah. direct. He was quick. He was, his movement is... He was both footed. He was good, man. He was, yeah, he was good. Is is there is there any other player during that period that maybe we didn't get to um, see enough of him, but that you thought at the club, at, wow, this guy's a player. He's going to go on to do big things. Is there anyone else that we did, we wouldn't know about? Uh, what like youngster wise? You yeah, know, yeah, or, youngster, youngster. Um, I know, I know, I know. He weren't a youngster, but he came in. But it was all to the work permit. In but of a Silvino. Okay. The left back. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He was unbelievable, and I think that him not him not getting his papers and things obviously massively then helped Ashley. You mm. know, and you know when they talk about a bit of luck and you need. Yeah. A, don't get me wrong, Ashley was on another level, but when you talk about needing a bit of luck, that was his bit of luck. Absolutely because luck. Yeah. Would he have got in as quick as I, I don't know? I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. Silvino was unbelievable. Yeah. But that was yeah, that was really crazy. Yeah, it? it was so odd. Yeah, because he was doing it's not like he was playing bad. Yeah, he's old. He's like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. 
I oh, know, I don't. Uh, it was something to do. Was it not playing enough for Brazil or something? I'm so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to play a certain yeah. amount of games at international yeah. level yeah, to get clear. Was, your... was he competing with Carlos them times as well? With who? Yeah. Like, so, yeah, yeah, Carlos would have been the left back then. No chance. Then, of course. <laughs> so he's struggling, isn't he? But he was, he was, he was excellent. Um, there were some really good young players. Um, that obviously never made it there. You know, our youth team was our youth team was amazing. We used to, we lost in the end to Leeds. Funny enough, in the in the youth cup, um, but our youth team was, you know, we beat beat all the other teams quite easily. Yeah. yeah. So, but out of that, when I look at out of the players, everyone kind of, bar probably two, had a career in the game. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, whether that was lower leagues or anything, uh, the, the yeah. biggest one obviously was Ashley. He was he was my <coughs> Ashley was my year. He's the he was obviously the standout. He was yeah, yeah. definitely. But there's one player um, that I, I never quite figured out what went wrong with him because he broke into the seat uh, the team during that double win and, or just after um, Stephen Hughes. Yeah, I thought he was going to be a, pr a little yeah. prospect. He looked decent yeah. when he filled in. Like what happened with him? He obviously at the time you got Petit and Vieira in it in that in that yeah, first. Um, yeah. He just he he he, he couldn't get in. Yeah, they never. I don't think they ever missed a game. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not like nowadays, yeah. unless it was suspensions. Yeah, true. And and then, then, was was I think was it he'd have Remy Guard coming in or something like Remy that. Remy Guard, Grimonde, um, yeah. yeah. So he, he was he was probably the number three centre mid there at the time, but he just yeah he just couldn't. Every time he you know if he got in for three games. For whatever reason, and Vieira and Petit are back there, back it there in, they're back in. Yeah. Like, um, you know, no matter what, it's like you had a very decent career as well. You know, from, you know we, we're looking at Northampton, Torquay, Boston, Shrewsbury, Knox County. I'm just naming off, you know, a few of the teams and everything. So, I mean, like, it's like a great living, you know, to be a footballer. I mean, grounding what you had at Arsenal, do you think, you know, the coaches, I mean, who who were the coaches? Was it Don Howe? He had yeah, yeah. Don yeah. Howe legend. Yeah, yeah Don Howe. Howe. Rest in peace. Yeah. Man. yeah. Um, did 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 Wenger? Did you learn anything from Wenger or those guys? Who 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 basically molded you molded you into the player that you became? Um, Don Howe. Yeah, yeah. Don Howe. Don Howe was overseeing the whole of the youth. Um, I was, I mean, I, I ended up having, at 17, so after my, during my second year, so my first year professional, I had to have an operation in February time. Jeez. And that's what I was out for a year. Mm, at that age what, as well, man. Yeah, I, it took me a long time to get back. and you're still not, growing physically. Still growing. I was quite scrawny still at that age. I never really developed until I was probably about 21, 22, to be honest. So... I was still mm. quite. Um, I remember you know, seeing like, you after like a few years, and thinking, "Shit, he's huge." Yeah, I, I, I'm like, I, I'm just I developed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, de I developed late. I just went like that way. Yeah, and nothing. So I was always quick, and I was always, you know, I had the speed, but I didn't. When I'm looking back now, if I was coaching a young kid now, obviously, so even my lad who's 13 now, you know, the importance of the physical side of the game is is massive That's you know you've got to be able to you've got to be a strong and you've got to be powerful and you've got to be explosive so when you're looking at all these top players even back then you look at Vieira you know he was big he was powerful but he was explosive as well he weren't rapid over 100 yards but he no. was off but he can catch you somehow right it's like a yard yard you're powerful yeah you ain't getting the ball yeah. um when you look at Anelka quite slim frame but gone can't get near him Mm -hmm. You know, so the explosives, yeah, the speeds, but um, but my coaches, yeah, Don Howe yeah. was um, the overseeing it. Liam Brady um, wow. was youth development yeah. officer, but he got yeah, yeah, Brady. He was one who he was the one who wanted. He was the one who scouted me, Brady. Um, wow. Uh, and then you've got Don Gibbons was our under 19s coach. Um, Aims there for no flips, eh? Hey. Yeah, Don Gibbons is good. Yeah, and then. Pat Rice was obviously the assistant, and then uh, George Armstrong was the reserves. Rest in peace, Geordie Armstrong. And then um, obviously, and then Wenger. But um, at, before I got that injury, I was still I was playing still for England. So I was playing for England under 17s and under 18s. Okay. And um, so I was only 16 at the time, uh, and I was going in training with the first team in my YTS year. 
So, Turn up. yeah, that was mad. Oh, oh man. my God. So, yeah. so what, they, they, they would tell you, right, okay, Lee, come on, you got to mark such and such. Yeah, so go in, you just, because remember, they were separate. So yeah. They weren't like, so go into the training as normal. Um, and the kit man would come in with a different kit. That was the first time I didn't know anything different. Kit man coming <laughs> with a different kit. And so I didn't have a squad number or anything. So yeah. he just put me in a first. So I was like, he said, you're with the first team today. Um, so he said, wait till, wait till the boss comes down. He wants a quick chat with you. So I'm, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Um, and all the other lads are bannering me like, oh, yeah, So I'm, they've gone out to train and I'm still, I'm there waiting for the first team to come down. Yeah. Um, and then the boss has come in and just said, Did you know like, yeah, oh God, yeah, 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 yeah. And this is where the lights of Adams and that come in because I don't know whether he knew or what, but obviously as they come off, he's come straight to me and said, yeah, come, come with me. So we walked over and then I trained and I, yeah, I did, I did okay, but it was just, it was an eye opener. And Benga used to do that a lot. He would bring people in and just see how they dealt, see how they cope. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And yeah, and see what they, see how they handled it. Um, did, did he have a word of you after? And did he kind nah, of? No, 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 no. Then the next day, um, next day, then I was with him again, and then I think it was um, international break coming up, so all the internationals went off. Um, and then after that, they came, Pat Rice come to me after and said, "Well done, like you've you've proved now you can mix it with ability wise." He said, "Now you just got to get Bro, stronger. Get yeah, stronger. yeah." And that was it. That was it. Um, but yeah, that was my first experience training with the first team. And it was like, oh, wow, yeah, it was madness. It was mad. Guys, what was that training session like? I was going to say, actually, you guys, you guys have any questions? You, you... That training session. I got a bag of questions. Yeah, I, I want to know about the, yeah, that specifically that training possession. Like, yeah, um, possession, possession, sorry, you can like... imagine. You can, and again, at the time, I didn't really, I didn't really appreciate um, how how tough that session was because you just you just go along with it um, but in the moment I, right? I was on the out I, I was on the outskirts of the possession it was it was bang 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 and <laughs> if, if you if you gave the ball away like you know what i mean you were you're struggling to get it back it was sharp it was yeah. so sharp and that's the difference i i saw but again my mindset was different to how it would be now looking at going, blah, blah, or first thing because my mindset mm -hmm. at that time was I yeah I can do this is you were in it right yeah, yeah this is this is me that's a it's weird now it's what I get what you mean mm -hmm. this is where it's supposed to be right that, that, yeah that's, this, that's is, this is this is the step this is what I meant to be doing do you yeah. know what I mean so it yeah. weren't like I was oh, I was nervous mm -hmm. but I didn't think of it being out of my depth even though I was only yeah. 16 I thought this is this is the next route of what I'm because at that time I had and I say this to my sons now I said I didn't have any negative thing happened to me at this time yeah. everything i went for i got in so i went to last for england got in went to lillyshaw got in wanted to go to arsenal i got there wanted to be a professional they gave it to me do yeah. you know what i mean so this next True. thing was i'm training with the first team that's that's, that's, that's part of the journey that's, that's that's part of the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so it's weird. it seems weird saying that now because I know how it's sounding, but I can't yeah. remember what my mind was like then. It weren't, it weren't. So when I used to come home, my, you could imagine my dad, he was like, what happened? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mate. <laughs> As in. <laughs> I was, you know, and I was like, yeah, it's trained. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Bro, I'm just telling my future sons, you guys are football players. Just so yeah, you know. That's it. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I'll be at the interview like, like yeah. In training, hardest player to to mark. Hardest player in training. Um, it, when obviously later on it was Henri because I ended up. Um, I was a centre back originally, yeah. and again I talked about my physical <laughs> yeah. side. Um, I got. I ended up making my debut for Arsenal as a right back. So mm. I played, and I played a majority of ninety percent of my career then as a right back. So. Okay. As you imagine, um, what Wenger always used to do was, before a big game, he would bring the reserves or the overs over to set up as that team they were going to play. Um, and 
as you imagine, I'm the right back. So you imagine back in the day when Arsenal were flying, you got Omri yeah. to the left. Of Perez <laughs> and left. Well, actually well, actually behind, oh, man, them seven second goals they used to score. Oh, Cole, Perez, right, Omri, I'm the right back. Yeah, I'm the right back. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, so every attack is like that attack was finished. It would be like bang, next attack. So they'd start with the ball every time. Then it would build again, build. But I know it's coming yeah. out to me. So that, <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out to me now. Okay. Really, really out again. Uh, that is one of them. But, um, oh, but no, man. that was Omri. Yeah, Omri was. He, he was. Yeah, he was. An, Anelka was quick, explosive, quick. Omri yeah. was that probably more, but pa powerful. Power. Really. Yeah. He, he, he turned into a machine, wasn't it? A machine. machine. Yeah. 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 He was a unit at Arsenal after a couple of years, man. Absolute yeah. unit. Wow. Squads is, yeah. So, obviously, being from Nigeria, you know yeah. who I'm going to inquire Kanu. about now. And yeah. So, yeah. It, do you remember any specific ridiculous things that he did in training? Yeah, like, because it was against me, I'll tell you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he did, right? Again, it was a time I came back from my injury and yeah. I remember I wasn't playing. I, I was playing still in the youth team to get my fitness back. And then the reserves, I remember this one game, I was sub and I didn't even come on and I was fuming. And Pat Rice was taking the game. Yeah. He came in after and said, um, I didn't want to risk you today because you're going to come and train with the first team all next week. Oh. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. So, I'll take it. Yeah. So I think they was, when I look back now, I think they was testing to see how, really? if I'd recovered, you know, from my injury. And to see me up closer than maybe what I was needing, maybe give me another level to go up and see where I was. So that's that, though that week was probably the hardest week of my life because I wasn't fit yet. I still wasn't fit. Um, and I just remember going home every day after training, going to, going to bed like Kurt <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> um, but Canu, Canu was a, he was the one because he gave me torrids every day because you know his favorite one was a chop and it chop. Yeah, chop, yeah, chop, <laughs> chop. chop. Um, and I remember this one time, but I was pleased because I stayed with him. But he he must have shot me about six times, <laughs> and I kept diving to block it because I think he's gonna shoot. So I'm, and then it, I dive and he'd chop again, but I get up quick oh. and, and he shot and he'd done it. He must have done it six times, and eventually, right. then he did, I think he felt sorry for me. Then he shot and then I blocked it. <laughs> um, he just he just he made it look at the smile like right. he was he was he was the nicest guy. Um, always helped the young lads because he was very quiet but always yeah. spoke quietly to the young boys and um because he was, was he, he was some player he was some was he a player. good trainer nah <laughs> i did it big nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah he weren't a good he he was he showed bits in training but he he never he when you look at the difference i mean someone like ray parler was probably the best trainer yeah, because yeah, not I because of his that. not because of the ability, but just Sheer yeah, heart. probably like a James Intensity. Mills now for Liverpool. Yeah, I can yeah, imagine, yeah, him being, yeah. you know, like that that you, you'd want him on your team because he's just going to yeah. work and run and run and run and run and run. Never going to um, stop. Yeah, but Canu would come out with things that no one else could do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Say so when mm -hmm. sometimes we would finish early and we'd go and watch the first team train, and it'd normally be the end, so they're doing a game. Um, yeah. Benga would always do a box to box game, a proper game at the end, and. Um, it was just good to see him canoe because you see him just floating about and he'd just do some mad things. Because mm. you, know, oh, you want to see that. You want to see yeah, that. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Oh, one of them ones. Yeah, yeah, like, oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Kanu, uh, he was... I mean, when you think them four strikers there at the time, it was him, Will <laughs> Todd, Henri Burkamp. Them four. Mate, that's ridiculous. Training must have been Too much um, mad. That's right. Yeah, Kanu, Kanu, Kanu and Burkham, they're touching. You, you, that, you have seen things. You have seen things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a mad That's thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah, to watch, that, to oh. watch that, be a part of that, you know, in training. And then when you see certain things come off in games, you, you, you'd be like, yeah, I that see was, that happening. Yeah. I see mm -hmm. that, you know, or yeah. feeling sorry for the opposition defenders because you know what's going to happen. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? So uh, yes. it's been such a crazy thing for a young lad, you know, everything to get into. And, and and I think that's what Arsenal are, I would say kind of lack today. You know, they they lack those kind of 
players of that ilk where young players such as yourself coming in and saying to them, okay, this is the level I've got to be at. Yeah. This is, you know, this is the level where, you know, top players aren't. It's kind of like at the I moment. Think, yeah, yeah, I don't think Arsenal have got any, you know, like as a young lad now, 16, I don't think none of them 16 year olds are looking at anyone in that first team now and going, yeah. oh, yeah, you know, like our yeah, literally, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. At, yeah, at best, like, they would look at like a sack and say, Oh, he's made it. So, we yeah, 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 as a young, as a young lad, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no one's that, 30 plus that you're like, Geez, like my son, I remember my first that, that day was like, I was a boy and they were the men, they were men, yeah, they yeah. were proper men. Um, <laughs> I don't think they ain't got that, uh, you know, clean Adams, you know, you, you know, Adams bold and then. It was Keon was Keon, there, yeah. Yeah. Seaman, Dixon. Look oh. at the names you're dropping, bro. Like, yeah. as in, bro, I yeah. would have been in Starstruck for a little while. I don't know, <laughs> in a little while. But, <laughs> literally, I remember meeting, I remember meeting Seaman and Merson after the Cup Winners Cup final in um, 93, 94. And I literally, for the first two seconds, I was like, you could do. <laughs> yeah, Dad, take the picture. Take the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. mate. Oh, oh, I yeah. felt I felt the same when I met Tony Adams at um, uh, charity dinner. Uh, basically, uh, my partner's uh, work managed to to get the tickets, and she was like, "Oh, do you want to go to this this dinner? It's got like these football players, like Tony Adams and Gazarin." I was like. <laughs> I suppose I'll have to, you know. Like, yeah, if, if you insist, because it's for you, babe, it's for you, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so, Lee, I mean, I want to um, ask you, kind of, you know, move on really in terms of what was your highlight at Arsenal? What, and and uh, what was your highlight? What your, sorry to ask, your low light there. Uh, uh, Highlight was my debut. So I came on in the what was then called the Werbenton Cup. You know, yeah, I was yeah. Benga plays his young boys, didn't he? Yeah. And um, uh, I, it was Ipswich at Highbury. Um, I came on, I think, with about 20 minutes to go. Um, that was because I was warming up and I didn't think I'm a right, I was right back or centre back. Yeah. I think at the time we're drawing one all. I think Pennant had scored um, and we're drawing one all. And I'm not thinking I'm coming on, you know, we're looking to win the game. But yeah. I think that one of the defenders went down injured. Um, and I just remember I'm warming up and I'm just pat right, I'm just there to say, canners. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> My first thought was like, no, like, I'm not. And I was going to run back, I'm like, oh my days. Um, but yeah, that was a buzz because all I, I remember, all I remember is um, Benga saying to me, "You're marking Scowcroft at corners." Like, just remember, you're marking Scowcroft. I was like, okay. He was big and as well. He was a unit, wasn't he? he was big, big lad. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. I thought, oh my god, I hope they don't score from a corner. I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't come near Scowcroft. Um, <laughs> I come on. He's easing and, you in gently. That's what that was. Yeah, like, yeah, going back their biggest player. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking they're step, remember stepping offs. I'm yeah, like, oh, my yeah, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm thinking, he's playing oh, right the upset. I'm thinking, why are they picking him up? Because <laughs> of stepping offs. Kind yeah. Of so, yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, embarrassing he does. But, um, but, yeah, all I remember coming on thinking, like, just get a good first touch. Just whatever happens, just make sure your first touch. And, um it was. I mean, I, I remember the ball got played out to me and I took the first touch and it was like my first touch took me sort of past the player closing me down. No. And then I just remember looking up to try and pass, but nothing was really on, so I just carried on. And then I forgot who it was, but someone blocked someone, so I was able to carry on down the line. I ended up then doing a one-two and I tried to cross it, but I was stretching it when and it, I put it over the bar, but the crowd, it was like a... Yeah, that yeah, must have been. It was one of oh, Wiltord's. So they just signed Wiltord for thirty million, I think it cost, didn't it? At the time, yeah. he, he played, um, and I never saw this, but my mate Dino was at the game, and yeah. he said, "Like I can't believe that like, Wiltord was just clapping you when you did that." <laughs> 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 um, and I'm told he jumped back in, like, "Yeah, yeah. My first touch is all right." Like, but um, but yeah, I did all right in that, but. Um, that was a buzz. Obviously, my family there and that mum and dad were proud. And 
Um, but that, yeah, that, as, as as a parent, you know, watching your son come on for his debut. Do you know what I mean? In in a pack, yeah. you know, well, you packed Highbury in yeah. their bed, whatever. And then see him do something like that. Yeah, I'd well up. Yeah, straight. I know for a fact I will. Yeah. Yeah, Now I'm talking it into existence like it's going to happen. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to happen. It's It's going to happen. Yeah, I I mean, that's that's, that's such a, a, you know, a proud parent moment, man. Yeah, definitely. Because I can appreciate it now, obviously, being a parent, you know, I can appreciate it. All the hours that your dad's putting, taking you to games, you know, on the Sunday mornings when it's raining and it's all whatever and everything. That's when you just say, yeah. 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 And and they did, obviously, um, my mum and dad, you know, at Lily Shaw, that's a two and a half hour drive for them. Every every Sunday morning, they, they, they were there. Oh wow! You know, every Sunday morning, because then we, we'd play the game. They'd see me all week, obviously, because I'm living yeah. away, and then we'd go out. And so when I look back again, I thought there wasn't one week that my mum and dad didn't come. Do you know what I mean? So when that, 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 you can't, you can't, put, you can't put a price on that. No. You know, no. To, you know as for someone so young, because it is. I mean, it's one thing. You know, kids go where you know after their A levels to university. That's one thing. Because but at that time, they're kind of like. Young, and ready to go, in it, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But 14, 14, 14, yeah, you know, and you, you're you're sanctioning yeah. your son to mm. not easy, not easy, yeah, definitely, you know, mate. That's definitely, that's yeah. That's and then obviously my brother at the time, he was a, yeah. you know, he was a pro at Millwall, a young so pro he, as well. He left home, he he left home at sixteen because he had to go. He was a YTS, so he moved down to Bromley um, with my auntie. He lived down there, you know, so. So yeah, it must have been strange for my mum and dad when I look now as a parent. I feel like, yeah. wow, like you know what I mean? Their kids, you don't think they're leaving home at fourteen and sixteen. You, yeah. think, you know, got an empty house at that age. I bet they. I'm surprised they're still together. The thing is, that's early ways to it, isn't it? That's early for them to be left alone like that. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm thinking in that about it now. I mean, as a as a parent, w- would you? Would you not think twice about your son going? Yeah, it'd be tough, you know. I think because my oldest now is thirteen. You know, I'm saying so this is you next year going trials and yeah. you know and getting that acceptance letter. I think I'd really struggle, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And obviously, my eldest does play, you know, and he's 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 decent. So yeah, it's one of them. The club was to come, yeah, if the club was to come in, you know, and move, he had to move. Well, I couldn't say no because I did it. You know, sure. so um, but it was like, yeah, it'd be tough. That would be tough. That yeah. would be tough. God damn. Yeah. yeah. And uh, your lowest point. Your lowest, lowest point. Um, it was probably my injury. Well, yeah. not, not not the injury itself, because again, you have the injury and you think you're coming back. I remember I was out for about four months. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, not all of that's just being injured. Two of that months was probably on bikes and, you know, getting your, your fitness work done. And I remember coming back and training for my second day, breaking down again, you know, with the knee. Oh, um, yes. And I just remember going, I knew, same pain. Um, so I remember just walking in um told Don Al was the coach, walked in, told him I'm struggling. He said, Go in. Um I remember someone trying to give me band and like as I walked in, like, you injured again? And I told him to, you know what I mean? Like I was done. I've got in the chamber cool. and I burst into tears, yeah. Cause I just thought I'm out for another four months and um Could you know what it means basically? You know Yeah. That, yeah. I yeah. couldn't you know, and you're seeing people come up, you know, training other lads are going to train with the first team now. Yeah, you know, and, all, and I'm there like going off on a bike ride or you know, mm. so people think it's oh you're injured, you're getting paid or you do it, you know, no, I ain't you wanna play. It's, it, it's it's mental as well because yeah. you have to get over that hurdle of okay, it's happened once you you're now getting back to some sort of fitness, but then it boom. You're, it happens again, happens again. And you're square one again, and, and to yeah. go through all of that again. Uh, yeah. And I was, okay. seven, I was, I was seventeen, eighteen. You know, it's not a, I was a young, I was a kid still, really. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. To deal with that, it was, um, it was, it was tough. It was tough. Um, and I remember Don Howe. Don Howe was one who come in, um, come into the change room. So he must have walked out of training. To be fair to him, um, I was in the changing room just 
crying um and he's come in and he just like consoled me and just said you're all right you'll come back and then I remember, all i remember is going into he, i remember him going into the medical room and i just heard shouting him going you have to get this kid better you know you have to why is this kid broke down you know going mate he was going on one hammering the physios i'm thinking wow it's not their fault like, <laughs> <laughs> what a legend though man yeah, tell me I loved on that. Legend. Was, yeah. yeah. And in that <laughs> summer, when I came that summer, he, and this is what people, again, you know, how, how he was, um, he got me in that summer. I remember him coming up to me at the end of the season. I just got back playing um, and I must have played like two reserve games and that was it. And then I was out. I was obviously the summer was the end of the season. Yeah. And he said to me, you booked any holidays? And I, I had, I booked a holiday with the boys and that for a couple of weeks. And then, <laughs> <laughs> hey. And then, and then, and then, what the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Napa, I Napa. Hey, oh yeah. my Every god! Times there as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, we're not even going to go there. You we can imagine, like, no, no, you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, carnage. Um, quiet one, so quiet he said, one. "What dates? What dates are you going?" I told him, and he says, "Right." He says, um, "You're going to come in to train three days a week when you're when you're not on holiday." And I was like, "Yeah, I, I want." It. I was like, "Yeah." He said, "We will get you ready for the new season." So I thought on that first day I'm going in, I thought there'd be a few um, people in. It was me and him. It was me and him. Wow. Yeah. yeah. London Colney. I got there, say I got there at 10 o'clock. Everything was set up. So I'm driving in and I can see the cones and that set up. I can see him out there. So I'm thinking I'm going to go and there's be a few lads. Um, but no, he said, no, no, it's me and you three times a week for the next four weeks. Wow. So That's amazing. amazing. Big up, Don. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was Big like, up. so again, when I think, I think, wow, he's come out of his house. Like, and we was there a good 90 minutes, you know, it weren't like a quick, it was 90 minutes of work and he beasted me, but I needed, I needed it. Yeah, I needed it. Um, and I did, and I came back that next season. That was the season I made my debut. You know, so I was, knock, I was knocking on the door a little bit. I wasn't quite good enough in the end to break into that team. Yeah. Um, but he got me back to where I needed to be, I think, to have a career in the game. Because I think I could have very easily been struggling with my knee. My knee still played me up all through my career. But I had yeah. to do these exercises. I had to look after. I had to manage it all through my career. But um, I think he, that, that mentally got me stronger, what he made me do in those four weeks. That, so that, I've got my respect man, to Don Al. Is, man, big up Don yeah, legend. Absolutely. Legend. Legend. Absolute, absolutely. Um, but you dro he dropped a name in, um, when you were talking about... Um, you dropped Jermaine Pennon in there somewhere. So I, are the stories true about how <laughs> Trim, he really Trim was? Knows, now? <laughs> Pen. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, Pennon, he's a lunatic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she was, yeah. <laughs> He's a funny Jermaine, guy. The, he's a funny guy. The thing with Jermaine is he left Nottingham, where I live now, but he left he left Nottingham at the age of 15 to come to London. Um, Kenan won't mind me saying he either, you know, he had, a, he had a background that was a tough background, yeah. you know. So he's come down to London to live with his grandma and... I don't think I can control him now as his dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's, he's moved to London as a kid. Um, yeah. He was a, he was some time for Arsenal. So time mate. for Arsenal. He's on big money. Um, he's he's that way and tailed anyway. He wants to go out. He wants to meet. Mm. People. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. So, um, but he was he was a big big talent. And yeah, I say the same to Pete Pennant had a very good career. He played for Liverpool. He went and played out in Spain. He you know, but his his career should have been an Ashley Cole career. He really that good? Yeah. That yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, where would you have was him? What would you say was his best position as well, by the way? He was the only thing that would have got him penance away was Beckham because he was a wing, he was a right winger. Okay. But um because he had the delivery, didn't he? As well, his mm. delivery was yeah. like, he was yeah. it was up there with Beck. Some people think that's I'm quoting that that is delivery on the run up the there with Beck. Are you yeah. hearing the name you're quoting? Yeah, I know. Lee. I'm, I'm Lee. telling you, I'm telling you, David his Beckham. delivery because it was at his full speed. Okay. Yeah. He he was he could whip he could whip balls uh, create a crazy at speed by beating a man at pace like that. Um, but he was he was an amazing talent and he should have he should have done better than what he had a good career. But he should have done better. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's Pennant, and that's that's him. And he he'd be the first to admit that.
Yeah. But he enjoyed his life. He's such a good guy. <laughs> he definitely, definitely enjoyed his life, for sure. He enjoyed his time. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. So, um, I guess um, what I wanted to kind of um, look really, I guess, to kind of wind down, really. I mean, I don't know if you guys, Gunnar King, Nigerian Englishman, you guys got any kind of burning questions you'd like? There's, like, there's, one, there's, there's one, one question I've got, and I think it ties in with, like, what, what you were saying about Pennant as well at the moment. Uh, I was just speaking to my uh, partner about um, Ronnie O'Sullivan, a snooker player. Here. Like, when when you kind of achieve so much so quickly at such a young age, yeah. um, do you think it's become easier for young players to deal with that, like in a more general sense? Or do you think that's, do you think that's probably harder in today's day and, day and age with the internet and, you know, sort of social media and like sort of, you know, yeah. the way it's kind of made life now? Do you think that makes it harder to deal with that side of the game? I think, I think um, younger players are probably had to become more mature than probably the younger players <laughs> of what we was because you know there was no camera phones back in our day when you're on a night out and all that so i think there's a <laughs> lot more you know, <laughs> for real at any time you get snapped by anyone in that bar mm -hmm. right so i think they've had to be they're more aware of from a younger age of what the modern life is obviously because they're mm -hmm. in it um mm -hmm. and I, so i think it's probably a little bit easier for them in that sense not because it is easy i think they've just had to be make it their mentality that it needs to be like that um mm -hmm. and i just think now that i mean i don't get players that are on social media i think you're you're opening yourself up for rival Thanks. clubs hammering you Thanks. you know your own fans hammering you um but if, if they're happy to do that and to, to I don't understand anyone that has their thing pro, um, public like that, but that's what people do in it. And people got different. I would never have done that. I would struggle with anyone trying to hammer me because I'd want to say something back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, it's the maturity maybe of what they're yeah. used to. Um, so I, I think their younger players now have to deal with a lot more. Um, but I think because of their maturity with it all in modern life, I think they're able to deal with it a lot easier. Yeah, it is tough. I can imagine it the, is. the self restraint you have to have. Um, to, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine. I, I, I can't imagine. Um, no. Say, no. Camera phones back in those days weren't, May. They weren't around then. Uh, so you, yeah. Thank you. Imagine. I know. Oh, no. I'm, glad, I'm glad they were in that same venues for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so obviously, um, big news um, throughout this whole week was the whole Super Europe League, um, and obviously the proposals that were put in place and everything. I mean, for you, growing up through the you know through the ranks and everything, and then. Um, I think um, your son, he's at Notts County, he said. Yeah. Um, that would just kill him, wouldn't it, really? If if this league, you know, did you have any thoughts on that? And, or any kind of thoughts on... I was going to say that, obviously, I don't want to talk bad about the ownership of Arsenal, but how do you feel that the place has changed um, over the years um, with, obviously, the ownership has changed hands? Um do you feel that there has been a shift in in terms of culture at the club? Um, and do you have any thoughts, obviously, on the European Super League that was muted? Um, yeah. Take yeah, the the Super League. I was fuming, you know, Trev. I was. I I thought it was an it was a joke at the start. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was someone was messing about, but they. When I thought, wow, they're serious. They're serious with it. Um, I, <clears throat> I just didn't get the exactly what they exactly what come out in the end. You know, how can you how can players expect to want to win? How can, you know, how are you meant to want to win games yeah. knowing Dude. that you've got a god given right to then go into the biggest competition at the end of every season? You know, so Arsenal now not doing well enough, but and that will eventually it won't be yet because players' mentalities will be different. But you imagine that carried on in ten years' time. Players' yeah. mentalities were changing over the years. These young kids coming up, 
no, no, I'll just go to one. If I'm good enough, I'll go to the best clubs because I'll play yeah. in the top competition, no matter how well we do in the season. Don't matter. Um, and Arsenal at the minute are not good enough to win the Premier League. Yeah. So they be they don't care then. Where it don't matter if we finish tenth or fourth or fifth or sixth or there's no there's no imagine the fans on that, yeah. And they want to charge big money for people to come and watch that. Yeah. Like, so I, I didn't I thought it was a joke and when I realised it weren't, um and I'm pleased that the the biggest people on the TV had their voice to to um to you know say what everyone was probably no. thinking. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like your Neville's and your Carragher's and your Blinnaker's and your Ferdinand's, you know, I'm pleased they had that platform to go because everyone was thinking it. But yeah. so I'm I'm annoyed with Arsenal. I'm annoyed that they've even entertain that mm -hmm. and i don't care if they had to you know you i know germany's different because they're hard you know they're owned more by the fans but yeah um, the respect that one of those clubs would have had to decline it oh could you imagine you know I mean? could you imagine yeah. that, that would have been I, I would have been so proud as an yeah. so proud yeah for my club to reject that stupidness you know that <laughs> yeah but but it's look at our owners, it was never going to happen. For, our owners. No. For, for me, it's yeah. not the fact that they entertained it. And this doesn't just apply to Arsenal, it applies to all 12 clubs involved. It seems all of them deliberated on this decision and made it, with, and not one thought. Maybe we should ask our fans what they want. Yeah. You know, like they, they do make they do make us who we are, you know, like yeah. you know, they all, all, you know, they, yeah. they are, our memories, you know, how they live on. It's because the fans tell <clears> these <throat> stories, you know, they pass them on to their children and their their children's children, you know, and that's that's how our names get etched in folklore. For sure. You know, maybe we should ask them what they think, you know, and I, I think that's the most worrying and upsetting thing yeah. about not you know about how Kronke and how we've handled it as a team, but but how many other teams have done the same. And it, it, it really just, what, is, what it smacks of is that that's what owners think of the fans. Yeah. You know, that it's money, they don't, it? need, it's, it's they don't need our consensus. They don't need any, no. you know, they don't need any, any well wishes or blessings from us because no. they don't they're care for them. You know, like... That was the hardest thing for me to, to really take about the whole yeah. debate. I hope, I hope it, it opened a lot of um, fans' eyes who don't feel that, you know, the, the ownership is harming the club. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> sure. so hopefully that, that's opened a few more set of... Do you eyes. know, the, the most embarrassed... I think the Premier League overall should be embarrassed. Like, the, yeah. the Premier League clubs particularly, because... In, if you really look at it, the Premier League don't need the money as much as, let's say, a La Liga or a Serie A, because what it is, is that La Liga, Serie A, they just wanted to get a piece of the Premier League pie, and they convinced right. us to disrupt yeah. our league to do it. Like, yeah. like, why can you imagine that? Yeah, why yeah literally. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> that's actually a joke, bro. It's bro. It's free, just, and we got six. So I'm like, six. Well, imagine. Well, it's because they... Perez, Perez said, Perez basically said, look, we need to be able to get some of that Premier League money. Yeah. But we can't do it without them, man. Yeah. We need, a, yeah, we need, a, we need six of them, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Six of them. No, no. And any six you want. Any six you want. <laughs> <six two one. laughs> well, Tottenham snuck in, so boy. I don't know how Tottenham got in. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! Oh, my Do you know how they could have made this Super League actually work, and it would have, I would have been sick. You see how in America, where the college game is just as popular as nearly as popular mm. as the professional game. Yeah. What yeah, they could yeah. have done was get maybe these teams together and say we're going to start like a youth league internationally. So it gives like a, a platform for these younger players to have. So they get build up a profile, have competition with international. Like they could have made it massive, and that could have been a whole income stream on its own. That's, 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 how they, young players bust on the scene that could have been sick. There is a youth um, Champions League, though, isn't there? I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, oh, there are, yeah, but no, but with but money like behind another it, where there's another competition yeah, like, together. Oh, whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 and all that, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, he's got to be jesting here. Nah, do you know why that's clickbait? Because Burkham has said on, yeah, that, on TV yeah, that he, 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 he doesn't want to be a manager, yeah, 
And not if, the if it was a coach, if they said he was coming in the coaching stuff, I might have int- I might have listened to it a bit. But he said, "I do not want He's to." Be say that. The only thing I know about him is that he did idolize Glenn Hoddle when he was growing up. That's the only thing I know about Burkamp, but not being a Spurs. Be that, that that's got to be clicked now. That's like if he was a Spurs, let's let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's not talk with such heresy, man. Anyway, he, <laughs> he, got, he got my attention. That was his. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, Good job for that. Good job for that. You got, yeah, right he got me. He got me there. Like, <laughs> no um, but yeah, I, I, I think. Um, what I want to um, touch, well, not touch, actually, just, you know, Lee, you're doing, obviously, after your football career and everything, um, you're doing great work now. Um, you have a couple of charities, uh, Bright Futures, Crew Sport, and you've got the DBA project. And plus, obviously, you've got um, the Cannibal Coaching, which uh, is based in um, uh, East Midlands. Yeah, um, East Midlands, yeah. Could, could you touch on a, a few, that, well... On, on, on those for us and, and, and give us more information. By, by, by the way, everybody, the um, website links are in the de- description below on uh, YouTube. So please have a look, donate, you know, show us some love, man. And also for us as well, <laughs> smash the likes, as we say. And <laughs> subscribe. But yeah, please leave. Um, yeah, so when I, my last club was Notts County, hence why, you know, moving up to Nottingham. Um, and then I went, ended up after that going playing part-time football and I've got the manager's job at a team called Boston United. Um, and while I was doing that, I realised that I didn't really like the manager lifestyle. I didn't like the win and lose at all costs. And the yeah, yeah. Was, that was part-time. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm part-time, I'm stressed. So, but what I did enjoy in, in that um, sort of journey, if you like, was taking the young, and not knowing it myself at the time, but taking the young players, we had a couple of 17, 18 year olds, so after training, especially as offenders, I'd say, right, you lot, with, you lot with me, we're going to do a bit extra. So I naturally did that, I naturally enjoyed helping those younger ones yeah. improve. I think maybe going back to my early days when I had someone do that for me, so I naturally mm-hmm. um, enjoyed that. Um, roll forward a couple of years, I decided to set up my own business coaching children so I realized that I didn't have a passion for going into the professional game I didn't have a passion for going and coaching pros or adults it was helping kids no matter what level yeah no matter what level whether they couldn't kick a ball for me teaching them to the techniques or young pros needing that bit of advice and that bit of extra work so I set up my company going back nearly nine years ago now um, and from that, instead of just coaching football and doing the holiday camps and the one-to-ones, I started working in more schools and we ended up setting up a mentoring programme. So again, again, maybe from my time before at Arsenal even, not coaching groups, coaching individual children. So yeah. taking them out of their class, children that might have behaviour problems, some children that struggle within the school environment, some children that confidence is shot to pieces for whatever reason, and working with them using sport, using football. Yeah. So we would take them out of class, do, I'd do a little football session with them. They would bring positive schoolwork to the session with me, talking about good things they're doing. Um, and it, it was powerful. And I think the first kid I had that I mentored, never been to a football game, he was actually a Derby fan. And at the time, I knew one of the players that was... Um, Probably why he's never been to a football game. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I bet he, <laughs> I, I, I bet he ain't been to him. So I had, um, I, 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 I spoke to the school and said, look, I can get him a couple of tickets if he wants to go over. His mum, his dad, is realised he didn't have no dad at home. Um, said his mum, you know, so I spoke to the mum. She said, not bothered, she weren't bothered. Um, I said, well, look, I, I can take him. If I've got your permission, I'll take him to the game. So yeah. we ended up, I took him to the game. His face, you know, he was only 10, his face. We went and watched um, Derby. It was a pre-season game. I think they played West Brom. So it was a pre-season game. Um when it got in the players' bar after, met the players, you know, oh, and all wow. these, yeah, he could not believe it. And that's when I realised this is what I want to do. I want to give, yeah. especially with... See the, the, the face. The power of it, yeah. And now he will, he listened to anything I said after that. I told that's him to work hard on the Yeah, yeah. Work yeah hard whatever you want. Yeah. yeah, why are you messing about? <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. So it was... That's, it was, that's brilliant. That's it was brilliant. the power of that and... Um, 
So what I decided was to go into that more and put all my energy to, to do that, go in more schools, help the, I saw it work, you know, I saw the, the yeah. power of football, the power of sport to engage with some, not just boys and girls. Yeah. Um, and about four years ago, um, some of the schools that we were in ended up getting to, in about three or four schools, some of the schools we were in had their funding cut from the government. So they were struggling to pay for the extra service that I was providing. Um, so I decided then to start a charity where we could get funding and I could say to the school, look, don't rely on whatever happens. Ah, we support you. We support you so I wanted to sustain the work we were doing, not come into these kids' life for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and then say, obviously, yeah, you got to go. Um, so uh, my charity, Bright Futures Through Sport, has been going now four years. And we're now, we went from four schools to working in our 36 schools. Um, we're working with just under 400 kids every week. Wow. Um, wow. And we're making a big difference with some of these kids. Some of these kids have a horrendous, you know, home life. Upbringing. I know there's certain parts of Nottingham which are a little bit kind of... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tough areas. Uh, yeah, tough areas. And tough so, kids. Yeah. Tough kids, but n not just... Um, you know, they're tough kids, but they have to be tough kids, you know. So, you know, we work with them and they're just kids at the end of the day. And as you can imagine, so we're, we're working with, and again, it's not just children that struggle behaviour. Some children, that are, we're in some really nice areas as well. And some of these kids, you know, have an amazing home life and they've got everything they need, but they've got zero confidence. They've got zero social skills. Um, you know, so we're helping them to make eye contact when you talk to someone, to, yeah. you know, to talk with some authority to put your hand up and answer a question in class um you know and we're teaching them that side of life the life skills um so that's around the east midlands um again that's my charity bright futures through sport um with cannibal coaching and i've just set up a project now with two other people um, down london way called the dba project and it's doing similar things but we're working more with high level um, crime, children in, you know, in gangs. Um, and we're working alongside the Met Police of um, Barnet and Harrow. And we're working more with social services. So we're, we're working with a lot of children now that that need to come out of those, those lives and that world. Um, county lines, you know, all these kind of things. So yeah. it's yeah. more high level. Um, but it's really powerful. And again, we've seen some massive differences in some kids' lives and not just the kids, it's the family members who are having to educate a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's powerful, it's good, and it's something that I never thought I would be going into when yeah. I was playing, when I was running around a football pitch. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's rewarding and it, it and it's, there's a lot of kids that need it. Uh, it's just crazy how... You know, some you know the turns that life you know takes you. You know, for whatever happened the journey that you've had, if you didn't go on that journey, you wouldn't be. You would never have changed that kid's face. Yeah. You know that you know you, you would never seen that kid's face that you took to Derby. You know, and things yeah. like that. You, you, you know, you have to say to yourself, you, you know what? Um, when you see that, it's amazing. Actually, um, I, I can only just sit here and just applaud you, man, because at the end of the yeah, day. Seriously. Doing that stuff, um, making a difference. There's a lot of people who can probably just, um, I don't know, had the same uh, trajectory as yourself, but just said, you know what, I'm just going to invest, I'm going to make my own money, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that you haven't done that, but you're also putting back in, you know, you're yeah. giving back what you, you know, the, the experience and the knowledge that you've gained um, over, you know, your, your career. And, and you're putting it to an amazing, amazing platform. Yeah, an amazing. Platform. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I think, um, I think the the main thing I, I mentioned it before. Up to the age of seventeen, eighteen, I had no knockbacks. I, I yeah. had nothing like that. Everything mm -hmm. was. I thought life was. was like, How did you deal with it when it came? It was like. Yeah, tough. it was tough. It yeah. was tough. Yeah. yeah, and I'm glad I went through it because it's gave me the 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 advantages oh. and the experience yeah. to pass that on. You know, so yeah. I look at the likes of Ashley, you know, nothing against him, but he had no knockbacks all his playing career. You know, everything yeah. he went, he went, he left Arsenal, he went to Chelsea, he played 100 plus caps. I'm sure he had problems obviously going on in his, in his personal yeah, life, but his, yeah. his professional life, yeah, 
this professional <laughs> life was nice. You know, yeah, from this very much so. school to retiring. It, it was a smooth a, transition. Every, smooth, yeah. No problems. Don't know yeah. what it's like to not, you know, not have a club or, you know, I went through a few summers with no club, you know, yeah. and trying to get contracts with, mm -hmm. my, with my wife and my kids, you know, and not knowing where we're going to live. You know, we're going to move this part of the country, that part, you know, so it's the things that people don't see, but True. It's, it's, it's made me stronger and made me be able to help kids because I've got some kids that, you know, are not going to be footballers. They're, they're just trying to be the best they can. I've got some yep. kids who've got a very, very good chance. They're very talented, yep. very determined. But I keep saying if they're 14, 15, you got them. When you get 16, there's going to be some things coming in your life. You yeah. Like, oh, you're <laughs> and they're yeah. like, like what? And it's just like, uh, yeah, uh, don't worry about it. Just live a little, bro. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Last That's question funny. I have, particularly, yeah. is um, one thing I've never understood is I remember like playing with players, obviously a lot better than me. They twist up the whole team, score goals in the playground, do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, they'll go to an actual professional football team. In my head, I'm thinking they're gonna make it and they're gonna be this skillful player, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Some of them made it, but when it came to actually playing in the first team, they became this one-touch, two-touch pass guy with the creativity, the dribbling, all that stuff. And I feel like a lot of English players that maybe in their youth teams were very skillful and don't express that when they come into the first team. Like, what? Why is that? Is there something that happens? Yeah, I've seen a lot less now, but. Yeah, yeah, a lot less now. I think more young kids are coming in and thinking they're the, they're the ones to save the club and that, and, they, and they're, they're the, the main players. But um, the, the only example I can give is Joe Cole back in the day because yeah. when I yeah. spoke about Lily Shaw, um, he was the year below me, so he was our junior. He was the best kid in the country exactly. by a mile, you know, exactly. the, the talent. And, and West Ham at the time were going to pull him out of Lily Shaw because they felt um, Lily Shaw were getting him to pass the ball too much. <laughs> um, they, were, they were going to pull him out, yeah. Because um, yes. West Ham were that that way of um, skills, wasn't it? Decanio, you know, you had yeah. all these, they, they wanted yeah. to incite yeah. like, yeah. the West Ham way. Yeah. The academy, didn't they? Excite, always had good academies, West Ham. Yes. And, um, and he, I think if he'd have been at another club, if he had started mm -hmm. maybe at another club, it might have been pulled out of him a little bit. And I think yeah. as his career went on, it didn't. He, he was he was good. Joe obviously Cole was an amazing player, but but he wasn't the player that yeah. we were hyping him. Because I remember he, one summer, I'm I didn't know he was Joe Cole at the time. He was just playing football in the park. And he's like, yeah, do you guys want to get him? Like it's like three of us thinking, okay, cool. Not thinking it was anyone, mate. Yeah, he beat us like sixteen nil or something. It was ridiculous. <laughs> And then I see him on the TV. I'm thinking, okay, cool. That's this really guy is going to be the new Gascoigne or something because he's got he's, he's super creative, so much skills. He gets yeah. to Chelsea. Obviously, Jose gets involved with him. Then boy. Oh, he got he got Jose. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that's it. it. Remember when he, he dragged him after about 20 minutes one game, didn't he? Because he won't track him back. So yeah. that's 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 what you end up getting from some managers. So you end up mm. playing that way. I went down mm. into the lower leagues and my. I don't think when I was at Arsenal, I ever kicked it with my laces. Everything was side foot. Everything was just a little pop, oh, pop, yeah. pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm going into League Two and it's channeled. Bang! You know, and <laughs> Ross it, it, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, I've never done this fast before. I'm right back. <laughs> you, know, you, you end up, you end up, you end up doing, you end up playing that way. You end up getting used mm. to it. And um, I think Joe was a prime example on what can happen if you're not playing with the right coach and the right. Um, team for you, team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And things have changed now massively because England oh, never had no dribblers for years, did we? we yeah, never... literally. And now oh, no Sancho, dribblers. Oh, all these no nice dribblers. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, oh, Saka, sorry, I forgot to mention Saka. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> How would I forget him? <laughs> um, Lee, do you know what? Um, that's a great um, time to have a few, and especially welcome. Ending on um, your charities and mentoring projects for me that, that that's so big. Um, yeah, it, it kind of says a lot about you know the person that you are. So you know, congratulations for all of that. Keep doing the great work. It's been fascinating, riveting, uh, funny talking to you this evening, um, guys. You got any last comments? Any last questions for Lee uh, for this evening? 
Uh, no, I just I would like to thank you for coming on. It's been an yeah, absolute pleasure. Pleasure. pleasure hearing your stories, uh, picking your brain, and and hearing about the work that you're doing as well in the community as well. We have to get you on one of our stu- <laughs> one of our reaction shows. Really? For sure, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> you have to go. If you get to the, um, the Europa League final, man. You, you, when we get to the Europa League final, yeah, we, oh, well, yeah. Like, <laughs> come on for the reaction or the preview. Or, yeah, or, or, no, I'd love wrong. to have you, Lee. I would. Um, no, thank you guys for inviting me on. But yeah, anytime. <laughs> anytime. Who, who is your current favorite Arsenal player? That's my, my current player. Arsenal. Um, Tierney. Um, <clears throat> The reason why is one, I was a full back, but two, I just think he's the only one in that, not the only one, but he's one of the main players that I, I can see something happening with him going forward every time. And I just right. like, I just like his whole, his heart, his energy, energy, yeah. 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 He's on with a game, he's explosive, he's quick, and he wants to do positive things all the time. Mm. I see these left backs and right backs all the time, just popping it back to the centre back all the time. Um, I'll see him. He wants to make something happen. Yeah, he wants to make something happen all the time if he can. I love that. And um, I almost, I almost look at him as like a throwback to our age growing up. You know, what I mean, when we talk about what young players have, and have to do now and how they kind of react to that, yeah. I would see. You know, like you might say, "Oh, yeah, you could not take a player from today." And have them playing when when you oh, were playing, he's when a, you're playing because he's they just want to be able to how it he's was. But <laughs> with Tierney, I I a hundred percent think you could take him back. You yeah, could have had him peaking, you know, in 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 your era. And I think when you look at him mentally, how he approaches the game, yeah. um, you would think he would be at home still. Yeah, you know, or yeah. he wouldn't. He wouldn't yeah. be as, as affected, like because he That's just gets right. on with it. He just he, he, quietly, yeah, gets on with it quietly, and I think I just, I just, I just like the way he, I like the way he plays. I can, mm-hmm. When he's not playing, and I see he's in, I'm like, you oh, can oh, tell, yeah, you yeah, like, can oh, really. Seeing, and you don't usually think about it as a fullback, do you? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> real talk. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. But yeah. I'm like, oh, miss, they're going to miss Tierney today. I'm thinking, wow, I'm saying that about a fullback, but he's, did he's, you just say yeah. they, or did you say us? I was just wondering. Yeah. It's got a big car, man. <laughs> I just had to Real check. I had to check you on that, Lee. Was it there or us? This guy's a scarf. This guy's a scarf. Scarf, isn't it? Yeah. What the world? Scarf, isn't it? But um, listen, I um, want to thank you, as I said. You know, bless. Thank you for coming on. It's been great. Uh, it's as I said, it's an eye opener. Um, as I said, I never knew half the stuff, more than half the stuff, man. It is yeah. great talking this evening. It's nice, it's nice yeah. to go back down memory lane, guys. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's it's nice. You're welcome. You know, you're you're welcome anytime. And um, listen, great stuff, and good luck with the charities and stuff. I, you know, obviously, yeah, we'll, keep we'll put it on. We'll we'll, we'll, keep, we, we'll, we'll um smash it you know we will try and um, circulate as much as we can as well for, on our platform so we'll do what we can for that as well to get the, you, it, it requires anything. i've just seen trev at the bottom it's bft oh okay just to get that on there i've just seen it now to be fair okay um, bft cool. and then Sorry. no worries mate we'll change that we'll get that changed and um yeah we'll we'll we'll, we'll smash this and, and just kind of you know promote it as much as we can um on, on, on. appreciate it appreciate yeah. it yeah because everything uh, if you ever want to expand to nigeria i'm your guy <laughs> <laughs> you never know academy <laughs> over here he set up a coaching school in in nigeria i'm sure yeah. next next car new might come well, from there. You listen, never know. Really Offic- so officially I'm... got my fa coaching badge one and two All just right, saying right. Just saying. <laughs> <We're laughs> <up with> that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> so, Lee, guys, thank you very much, Lee. It's been a thank pleasure. Thank you, guys. You take care, man. And you guys, smash the likes and smash the subscribes. Exactly. Again. You know it, everybody. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We out. We are Arsenal. Awesome. We love Arsenal. Awesome.